Let's uh, turn to Dawn and then uh, Carol and then Graham. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Baroness Harding. I mean, it is quite ridiculous, isn't it, that like there were no tests available in COVID um, hot spot zones. Um, out of the 10 top uh, COVID-19 hotspots in England, there were no tests available and people were sent, you know, far away when they had testing centres on their doorstep. But, um, but my question to you is, um, how do you define the capacity? How do you work it out, uh, the capacity? Um, well, first, it's not that there are no tests available in our hotspots, quite the opposite. There are two to three times more people being tested in the areas of high prevalence than the, than, than, than the, the national average. But that's not actually the experience of people who are living in areas that um, are on lockdown, for instance. I mean, LBC conducted um, uh, investigation into that. So that's not actually the case. And, and, and also, as you mentioned, that the facts are that... I mean, out of the government's capacity of 375,000 that they say they have with tests, the actual number of people being tested has stalled at just 437,000 people a week. Um, and that was at the start of this month. So that equates to just 62,000 tests a day. So when you take what you say is the capacity and how many people are actually being tested, why is there a problem with testing? I'm afraid that's not true. Um, uh, today, 207,000 people were tested. Um, yesterday, 213,000 people were tested. On the 7th, sorry, on the 14th of, of, uh, of September, so Monday, 213,000. On the 7th of September, 170,000 people were tested. Um, so I, I'm sorry, I don't know where your numbers come yeah. from, but these are the validated even ONS those, check numbers. Even of people on those who are numbers, it's still less than what you say you have as a capacity. You will, you will never run at exactly 100%. Actually, for a couple of days in the last week, our laboratories have run at over 100% capacity, which we're very concerned about because th these are, are, are large and complex. Um, end to end operations. So if you take our laboratory in Milton Keynes, it's processing over 30,000 tests a day. That's 30,000 packages that have a swab in it and your personal details that have to be physically unpacked, prepared, processed, put through the testing machine, logged back into your system. And, yeah, so we understand that, you know, the delays with the lab and the testing, that is obviously quite clear, and it's quite clear that's why you're trying to delay people um, taking a test. Now, I know that there's a research institution that has lent some PCR machines. They're on loan to the end of the month, which I'm sure is included in your testing capacity. Do you have plans to extend the loans of these PCR machines? And if not, what will happen if those machines are taken out, taken back? I'm, I'm afraid I don't know the specific example you're referring to, but if we look at our path from the 242,000 capacity that we have today through to 500,000 at the end of October, there are a, a large number of different elements that make up that path. So our existing laboratories are, as we speak, implementing more robots that unpack and prepare the tests ready to go through the PCR machines. That will exp I'll, I'll get there in a sec, sorry. That will expand that you testing quick, capacity. The chair will uh, not let me ask my other there questions. are a number of laboratories across the country that we are adding into the network. That's acquiring more testing capacity. Um, and then, as I've said, some of the larger labs that we announced uh, a, a month and, and ago or two ago are also coming on stream. So there's, there's a whole range. I, I can't speak to your specific example. But, but any, we, any machines that are on loan, you will extend that loan so that you can continue it, to it, increase your It's capacity. a mixture, um, because some of them might genuinely okay. be needed by their universities, for example. Can, can I ask you just about Randox, um, who won a £133 million testing contract um, unopposed at the start of, of the outbreak? They disposed of 12,401 used swabs in a single day um, on September the 2nd, and they also voided more than 35,000 used test kits since the start of um, August. Um, the company has not denied charging the taxpayer for voided uh, results. Can you confirm that the taxpayer has been charged by Randox for these vo voided tests? Well, you're referring to a, a couple of incidents that are, are still ongoing. Um, so at this stage, I can't confirm or deny that. We are working through uh, with Randox and with the MHRA um, to understand the root cause and what's actually happened. OK. I mean, um, just sticking with Randox for a minute, up to um, 750,000 unused coronavirus testing kits were, as we know, taken out of the system because 
um, of safety standards. Um, what were those safety standards? What was wrong with them? Uh, well, as I said, that's, uh, that's uh, an, an issue that is currently under investigation together with the M MHRA. Okay. And Randox employs the MP Owen Patterson on £500 an hour. Do we know what he does for Randox? I'm afraid you'd have to ask um, Owen Patterson rather than me. Okay. Um, uh, and just my last bit of test uh, questions, Chair. Um, we're talking a lot about people taking tests who are uh, symptomatic, but we know this is an asymptomatic disease and it spreads asymptomatically. Um, and Professor Bell gave evidence to this committee and he said that it is a largely asymptomatic disease, which means that you have to be careful about track, trace and isolate strategy that relies on symptoms because you will miss 70% of the people. How do you square that with the current strategy that you're employing? That is exactly why our second testing priority is care homes. So we are running a, a very large asymptomatic testing programme where we test all care home workers in adult social care every week for exactly the reason that you describe and why we place that actually as a higher priority than the general population symptomatic testing because we've learnt from the last nine months how this disease attacks the elderly and the, uh, the, the, uh, the most vulnerable in our society and how it's really important that we protect them in a closed environment in care homes by ensuring the disease doesn't come in. Instead of criticising people who may be working in care homes who are going to get tests that are asymptomatic, we're going to start encouraging them. I'm not person. criticising care home workers. I'm not criticising anyone at all. Care home workers receive um, tests once a week today and have done uh, over the course of the summer. And we're very committed, the government's very committed to maintaining that care home asymptomatic programme for the reasons I've just